Today I have to take a look at the water activity meter. So this is our water activity meter. Nice small thing too. I like that this one is actually portable. Most of the time we're gonna be testing water activity. You're gonna have this big bench top tool that you can't really move around with. This thing, you can take this right with you. Now water activity is a different thing than water content. Water content is just overall water and that includes water that is already bound to the product. Water activity is gonna measure unbound water or water energy. So this is gonna be water that's available for microbial growth. So this is gonna be a much more useful tool if you're trying to find out if whatever your product is, is gonna be able to grow mold. So it has a plastic body and we got a metal chamber. So it already comes with a couple of AAA batteries and we got a couple of switches in there. So if we need to calibrate that, we can hit that with a toothpick. Now, when we open up this chamber, we want to make sure that we're not going to be getting any contaminants inside the chamber. So you want to wash your hands or wear gloves. It looks like this one is just magnetic and we got a rubber ring around the outside to make sure we got a good seal. So we got our sensor element there in the center and this is just for holding our product. Nice stiff foam on here. Looks like there's nothing beneath these. So these are just open spots. So if we want to put something in here, like maybe we have a container full of calibration fluid, we could actually got a spot there just for that. We also have a tether. So if we want to make sure that we're not going to be dropping this thing, we can tether that guy up. And we have three testing containers. And we've got our instructions. So on the front, we got our power button. On the left side, we've got a port for our cable so we can connect this to a computer. It does not come with a cable. It calls this an optional cable. So I believe you're going to have to buy that separately or find something else that would work. And if we turn that on, that's nice, so it actually has a backlit display. But we can see the current reading of 0.41, so it's just going to be constantly reading. So this is what is in the chamber while it is empty, and this shows the current temperature. And the temperature can be important because if it is too hot, it can actually make condensation rise into the sensor. So you don't want to just grab a product that was sitting outside in the sun and start testing it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this is calibrated. Now you can buy your own solution to do the calibration with, or we can make our own. You can get 100 milliliters of purified or distilled water. Perfect. And the next thing we're going to need is 36 grams of salt. Okay, that is pretty close. We're going to add the water to the salt. And you don't need a fancy stir like this. You can do it by hand, but I've got one, so I'm going to use it. But the idea is we just want to stir this until we can see the crystals in the salt. So we're just gonna leave this thing capped. We're gonna leave it there for about a day to let this set, and then that will make our calibration solution. So I've let this sit for a day. I'm going to put the testing cup inside the chamber, and we wanna fill that about halfway up. Now we have to let this sit for about 10 to 30 minutes. I'm just gonna go ahead and let this sit for a half hour. It does not need to be on, so we do not need to worry about wasting battery power. I'm gonna leave it off, sealed in the chamber for 30 minutes, and then I'll come back and turn it on and see what the reading is. Okay, let's turn it on. We are looking at 0.73, so it's supposed to be 0.75, so that is pretty darn close. It is within 0.02, so that is an acceptable tolerance. If we want to tighten that up, the left button is to increase, the right button is to decrease. Just looking at pressing the toothpick on the orange part of this button. There we go. So now we are calibrated 0.02 above. So now I'm going to reseal it. I'm going to give it another 10 minutes, and we will recheck. And there we go, we got a perfect 0.75. So now I'm gonna take this container and set that aside to get cleaned, and we will set up a new container for testing. We wanna use something that is freshly open because if you just let this thing sit open, then it's going to change to the relative humidity of the environment. It's a good idea to start testing this as soon as you open the package. And the reason that we're cutting this is because we want to expose the inside, to make sure that we're coming to equilibrium, we're getting an accurate reading quicker. And we wanna to try to cover as much surface area of the bottom as we can. We do not want to go over the top of the container. Then we can begin testing again. And we're gonna let this sit for about five minutes. Okay, and we got a reading of 0.68. So that is a little bit on the high side. Ideally, you're looking for a 0.65 or under. So that's kind of interesting. So this jerky is a little bit on the high side for water activity. So that's neat to know. So yeah, overall, that is a very cool meter.